Hey everyone, my name is Jason Mueller. I'm the Director of Systems Engineering and Supporting U.S. Federal here at Attack IQ. And today I'm excited to bring you our third episode of CyberSnacks, a new series in which we break down key features of the Attack IQ platform in just a few minutes. Today I'm really excited to talk to you about how we can unite threat and risk management frameworks, better known as NIST 853 controls, and the MITRE ATT&CK framework. I've got my trusty pistachios here because this is my go-to snack. And after all, it is nature's protein. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. But first and foremost, let's understand what NIST 853 really is. So NIST, in short for National Institute for Standards and Technology, is a family of security controls that has become a global standard for security control regulation in a wide range of organizations. It is a catalog of security and privacy controls for federal IT systems originally published in 2005. In 2012, the Obama administration simplified the NIST 853 family as a NIST cybersecurity framework. The Center for Threat Informed Defense recognized that mapping attack to NIST 853 would create a baseline that organizations can use to evaluate their security posture. So now we have a convergence of two frameworks, one that is able to assess risk and another that showcases how adversaries are moving throughout your environment and able to either, either gain a foothold, establish persistence, um, exfiltrate data, and move laterally. And so now we have the ability to map the two together, speak the same lexicon when we're assessing risk and start to make data-driven informed decisions about how to properly secure our environment. So that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the Attack IQ security optimization platform and showcase how you can actually play this out. Okay, so we talked about the two frameworks. So how can we take those two frameworks, converge them, and start to execute from a threat emulation standpoint in a production environment, all the while doing no harm, and pull back that empirical data that allows security teams to make better informed decisions as to how to secure, prevent, or detect against adversarial behavior. So truly understanding risk. And the way that we do this, first and foremost, we're looking at assessment templates. So we have assessment templates that have been built out uh, to satisfy multiple business units, cross-functional areas within cybersecurity as a whole. Maybe you want to operationalize the MITRE ATT&CK framework, or you want to use open source threat in intelligence, uh, threat analysis reports that are out there and widely available. Maybe you want to test particular security controls or do a security product health check and assess whether or not the vendors that you've uh, implemented within your security stack are properly configured and capable of preventing and detecting as they say they are. So that said, we're, we're going to focus on compliance once again because we are talking about NIST 853, uh, particularly the NIST 853 control family of which that we can actually automate within the uh, platform itself. Understanding that there's still some paper, pen and paperwork exercises that you just truly can't automate. But for what you can from a technology standpoint, uh, we've built this into the platform, right? So first and foremost, if we wanted to better understand a particular control family that falls within NIST 853, for this case, IR control family, what is it that we can play out from a threat emulation standpoint and, and glean from this data and this observables to better protect ourselves from nefarious behavior? Right, so the constructs are going to remain the same. You have the description, you have the tests that fall within the uh, associated template, and within these tests, you have scenarios that we're actually going to play out in your production environment. So from a lateral movement perspective or from a exfiltration aspect, right? what is it that these um, scenarios are actually going to do? Well, that's a good question. Let's actually bounce out and look at one of these. So exfiltrate files over ICMP. Real briefly, we'll show you the construct here as to what the scenarios look like. You get the scenario type, you have the supported platforms, you have the ability to download the source code, once again, lending to the openness of our platform. You have a scenario description here as well. And you also have the ability to make configuration changes to the scenario in order to satisfy your particular use case. But once again, going back to NIST 853, why is this important? because we can start to play this out from threat emulation and really understand, again, what our um, gaps and weaknesses are by truly playing this out as an adversary would in our own infrastructure. 
Here are the reports that we can also glean from as well. So you have something tangible at the end of every assessment run that you can pull back, provide to leadership to showcase, uh, maybe from a SLA perspective, how you're faring out against um, nefarious behavior. Are you properly and adequately protecting as you, sh as you should? And here are some reports that we can use to document such and the outcomes associated with this assessment. So let's go ahead and get in and look at the actual assessment and run this. All right, so let's actually dive into a, a NIST 853 uh, overview assessment that I've already ran in my environment here. So just from a workflow aspect, let's back up real quick and look at the setup phase. Extremely easy and seamless to utilize here. First and foremost, you have to manage your assets as to which ones you want to actually test this against. In this case, I selected the Microsoft Windows ATP uh, asset that I have deployed in my cyber range. Um, but you can also see that we showcase uh, from a visual standpoint what technologies are deployed on the assets that are within my environment. So it allows you to quickly analyze and uh, determine maybe you want to run a set of tests within a disparate environment to really understand what the efficacy is associated with the vendors in your security stack. So we'll leave this as is and go and look at the uh, second setup phase here, which is the test. And once again, this is an assessment template, so this has already been derived and curated for you by way of Attack IQ. But in the instance that you want to actually go in and make any modifications to this, you can do so. You can rename the test, you can manage the scenarios that are uh, embedded within each respective test, and you can add scenarios to this if you so choose. But for this purpose, because this assessment was derived and uh, particularly to um, execute the NIST 853 control family, what we have is adequate, right? What we've built is, is good to go. So I don't need to make any modifications here. I can simply move on to continue. So you'll see here the run now button, right? So you can do this in two different ways, one of which is running this on demand. So let's say we want to do an ad hoc test of NIST 853 controls. We can simply click, uh, click Run Now, and you're going to get this nice little disclaimer that says that you may trigger alerts in your environment. And once again, based on the fact that this is operationalizing the MITRE ATT&CK framework uh, for the outcomes associated with that of NIST 853 controls, we should trigger alerts here. Right? This is a widely documented uh, attacker framework that has well-documented TTPs that vendors, in turn, as well as um, OS providers, operating system providers, should be able to either prevent and or detect against. So that being said, I'm not actually going to run this because I have already previously ran this. But if we look at the other option here, you have the ability to schedule. So lending to the uh, continuous uh, automation within the platform. Right? I can set this and forget it, if you will. I can run this daily at a predetermined time. I can run this hourly, uh, weekly, monthly, or yearly. And furthermore, I can email myself a report or to my um, uh, leadership team or the main stakeholders here at the end of each run so that we're not having to necessarily live within the console. Furthermore, if we actually look at the results here, right? how do we showcase these results? We showcase it in the overall com combined, meaning pre prevention and detection. But we also break this up, understanding that not all technologies within your security stack may be capable of preventing. You may have intrusion detection systems. You may have uh, data loss prevention without the P turned on, right? So you're looking at data loss, but you're not actually preventing it. Or you're using some sort of EDR technology for detection purposes. Regardless, once again, the constructs are the same. We'll showcase the outcome. We'll showcase the tests that are associated and the past fail rates. Likewise, we actually break this down by test as well. So if you saw, we had 12 different tests there. Uh, and within each respective test, we can show you the outcome here as well. So from initial access to execution to persistence, regardless, we break this down into its own respective vertical. So you can start to uh, um, query the data and better understand uh, where your gaps and weaknesses may lie. We can also look at it from a summary perspective too. So historical run results, if we had this scheduled to run over time, we would see drift in our environment, either trending up or down. And mainly being able to look at the outcome here and, and truly understand when we say Attack IQ says this was either prevented or not, or detected or not, how is it that we come to that determination? First and foremost, we're showing you the date that this was ran, the, ta the tactic that falls underneath the MITRE ATT&CK framework, the test that was executed, the scenario name, the user privileges, which by default is system, and you absolutely have the uh, ability to run this as a particular user or persona, the asset that we tested against, and then the outcomes here. And we see not prevented, but we see detected by Microsoft De Defender ATP. And for your organization, this may be adequate. 
right? But let's get to a state where we can actually start to prevent this. And how do we do that? We start to actually look at the outcomes uh, of the data and the observable, observables associated. So in this case, once again, prevention, not prevented, detection, we detected this. We ran a generic script execution exercise. We showcased the actual script and the outcome here. We provide you with mitigation recommendations as well. And we also showcase the detection details. So in this case, we had a Microsoft Defender ATP alert. And if I wanted to bounce out into my respective uh, ATP platform, I could do so by clicking on this particular link. And this will actually drop me out into the ATP environment. So I'm not actually going to log in here, um, but I was just showcasing the functionality between the integrations. And furthermore, we can look at the indicators of compromise details. So right here, we can see the outcomes from IOC standpoint. We see that um, the Stix 2.0 open IOCs that were generated that we can glean from and utilize from a threat intelligence standpoint. Um, and you also have the ability to pull down the logs, once again, lending to the openness of the platform. Now, like I said, we have a couple different ways of looking at the data. We looked at it from a historical standpoint uh, to showcase drift in our environment, but also from a heat map aspect. Once again, this being a critical component to actually assessing uh, NIST 853 controls by playing this out by way of the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So now understanding that adversaries are, or red teamers, pen testers alike, are operating from a left to right mentality from a cyber kill chain aspect, whereas blue teamers are operating from a right to left. So the more that we can start to minimize risk here on the right-hand side of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, um, the less risk that we're actually uh, taking on and introducing into our environment. So once again, you can do a couple different things. You can look at it from a prevention standpoint, a detection standpoint, overall combined. We can expand the sub techniques and we can also take a screenshot uh, that we can tuck away for once again, trending and analysis purposes. So the whole nature of this is not only to uh, stimulate the environment by way of threat emulation, but actually glean from these observables and this telemetry uh, that is produced to help us make better decisions to protect our environment. And once again, having the ability to create and generate reports. So I can go in here, I can name a report. For this case, I'll just call it test. We'll go ahead and select the, tile, uh, the style of report that we actually want to run. So I will select the summary report here. I will select the run. And now I'll save the changes and I can look at the report to better understand the tangible outcomes here, right? So like we said, we uh, stimulated the environment by way of threat emulation within the Attack IQ security optimization platform by playing out a subset of MITRE ATT&CK aligned TTPs to better understand our risk alongside the NIST 853 control framework. So we have five different reports that you can glean from. Uh, you can customize these reports to show your company's branding. It could say Acme Corporation powered by Attack IQ. We show the, the name of the report. In this case, I named it test. The assessment uh, that we ran, when we generated this report and by whom, as well as the executive summary, and finally getting into the meat behind this report. How many scenarios were unique that we ran across how many assets? What are the total re results? How many were prevented versus that of detected? So now, like I said, we're, this is empirical evidence that we've gleaned from our environment that's providing tangible outcomes so that we can provide this to our uh, security engineering team to implement uh, mitigations, remediations, or you can simply tuck this away once again for trending and analysis purposes. So you understood when we ran this set of NIST 853 control framework, uh, control framework family, um, what is the outcome, whether it was last month, yesterday, or a year ago? So we can email and download this as well and further automate this so that once again, it's residing in your inbox uh, in the event that you don't necessarily want to live inside the console and wait for this to uh, generate. And along the lines of not having to necessarily live within the platform itself while you're waiting for these outcomes to be produced, we also have uh, notifications. So we can set up notifications. Um, first and foremost, we can set up pre-execution notifications. So let's generate a CSV file, send it to uh, a set of recipients or stakeholders, and let them start to better understand what it is that's going to be played out in, an, in our environment before we actually go to execute. Furthermore, we can set up a threshold. So in this case, for demo purposes, my last pass, uh, my last run pass rate was 
obviously that's not very good. So regardless of whether it's trending up or down, let's go ahead and set up a series of notifications. It could be by way of email, Slack, Jira, AWS, as well as ServiceNow. So again, providing automa automation within the Attack IQ security optimization platform, and also delivering consistent results no matter who is initiating this assessment. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cyber Snacks. I hope that you found this to be valuable and even enjoyed a snack of your own. If you'd like to take a deeper look at the Attack IQ platform, you can feel free to join us for live weekly demos happening every Thursday. We'll post a link in the description below. We hope to see you there and on future episodes of Cyber Snacks. Take care.